welcome participant. So, the continuation of, of uh, resource management, we are going to discuss uh, various approaches in resource management. There are different approaches which are being followed for natural resource management and if you look at those you know different approaches, the first one is spatial approach means it depends on space or distribution or location of resources. Second ecological approach from the name itself it is very clear that it considers the ecology while managing the resources. Third economic approach so that means here it will look at the economic aspect while managing the resources. So, here the value of resources would be critical. Fourth is technological approach where the intervention of various technology is critical for efficient resource management. And finally, we have ethnological approach which tries to bring the people in the management system. So, we will discuss in coming you know 15 20 minutes about each one of these approaches and how these are being carried out in the field and how they are different from each other. So, let us start with the first approach special approach. Now, as I said that from the name itself it is clear that it deals with geographical distribution of the resources. Its main focus is to account for the locations and spatial arrangement or phenomena of earth surface means how the resources are distributed in an area. Next geographers are normally concerned about how physical space is actually structured, how men relate through space, how men have actually organized their society over space and how the conception use for space has changed over an area or from one area to the other. So, in a sense in special approach we look at that how things are changing from one area to the other. Next ecological approach here resource management is done on the basis of understanding on the functional components of physical and biological environment and their relationship. So, as I said that the principle of ecology play an important role in ecological approach of natural resource management. The core or important message is the allocation of resources in a manner that minimizes the environmental disturbances. So, in ecological approach creation of ecosystem inventory in determining the resource area resource zone is also important. It tries to you know identify what actually leads to stability and determination of various limiting factors like slope, slope of land, rainfall, altitude etcetera. So, finally, the analysis of inventory data for evaluating the functional significance of various components and recommendation of alternative judicious use of natural resources is an important part of ecological approach. So, participants as you see that between these two approach there are one or two very significant difference. In special approach it is looking at as I said from one space to the other how you know resource type and resource characteristics are changing. In ecological approach it looks at the relationships between you know the resources surrounding uh, environment and most importantly it looks at the allocation, allocation of resources because allocation of resources is actually going to decide that how you are going to utilize or how an individual or a society is going to utilize the resources and will take care of their environment. So, the allocation is key here in this ecological approach. Next economic approach from the name itself it is very clear. So, this approach will mean business. 
So, the essence of this approach is the removal of material from the environment and their transformation by production and consumption of their eventual return to the environment. So, here we will look at the economical benefit of a resource. The main objective of this approach is to achieve economic efficiency by minimizing the production cost and maximizing monetary benefits. So, in this approach naturally you will need some kind of intervention of technology because you know advanced technology or efficient technology will reduce your cost. So, here in economic approach you will see that there will be lot of you know intervention of different type of technology. Now, what are the assumptions that are considered under economic approach? First, the demand can be identified and consumer preference for different uses are known and can be compared that is already assumed. Next, benefits from the resource uses can be quantified in monetary terms because that is important for economic analysis. Then resource use has no external effects on the physical environment and economic situation. Main limitation is all resources are not similar to market goods. Next assumption quantifying or substituting is difficult means you will find difficulty in quantifying a particular resource and substitute that resource by another one. Suppose as an example coal, suppose you need coal as a resource for a certain activity in the society and now to substitute coal by another resources for continuing that particular activity may not be feasible because that particular activity only can happen when you provide or you take coal from the nature. So, the substitution of you know sometime a natural resource by another one could be difficult. Finally, willingness to pay or contingency evaluation are widely used techniques in case of economic approach, willingness to pay. So, if you are taking some natural resources from the nature for utilization of your benefit, so you are you are expected that you will be willing to pay for that. So, these are some major assumptions that are considered under economic approaches. Next, technological approach as I said that when economic benefit you want to achieve that means you need to reduce your cost to increase your benefit. So, technology is required. Now, technological approach it looks at the effective application of economic approach can be enhanced by developed or development or intervention of technologies. Technology it can reduce the production cost and increase production with same volume of labor or resources. So, if you bring in a new technology which is much more efficient energy efficient or it can actually produce the you know product within less time. So, definitely that is going to enhance your production rate. Technology is also a promoter of economic growth there is no doubt about that. Then different kind of resource uses are often affected by floods, droughts this kind of natural event which can also be solved by different kind of utilization of technology like bringing in dam, irrigation channel. So, positive technology you know intervention will definitely be raised to go to reduce the environmental deterioration and also it will you know at the same time can manage the resources in a better manner. So, that there is no sudden kind of resource crunch in the vicinity. So, role of technology is also important to reduce pollution. Anti-pollution technology is cost effective in terms of health, property, environmental damage. If your technology is environmentally clean then definitely the health will be you know good or maybe the health will not be affected negatively. So, the expenditure associated with your medical will not be there. So, there are various other positive effect environment will remain relatively better if your technology is good. So, 
there are various other you know role of technologies like new crop variety suppose you produce a crop variety which requires less water then definitely you are going to save a important natural resources that is water so advancement of technology basically would enhance the efficiency of resource management from economic point of view from environmental point of view as well next ethnological approach so this approach as i said at the beginning that it brings in people in the center ethnological approach it stipulates that cultural differences in a part influence the way people perceive and use resources of their environment so here the human component comes in so ethnological approach it consider the cultural differences suppose there are two place in one place people worship certain natural resources like say trees or water body in the other place suppose they don't follow that culture so in one place you will find out that people are utilizing those resources like trees and water for their uses but at the same time culturally they worship those natural resources as a part of their culture so there is a inherent conservation practices is being followed whereas in the other place that is not happening so the cultural difference also influence the way people perceive and use their resources the use of resource is related to specified cultural theme and perception of a resource very true as i just now mentioned that when one place to the other one country to the other the culture of people changes the way people perceive towards a particular natural resource could significantly change from one culture to the other culture so next citizen participation in the entire development process is a key component in ethnological approach so as you see that in every point is the human component is coming and playing an important role issue identification of the legal administration environmental constants and how they are going to impact the traditional ethos culture and whether those can be incorporated even within a legal framework can also be you know tested or studied or analyzed under ethnological approach then collection analysis and evaluation of data is also often carried out keeping in mind that those natural resources are being used for the good of society so they should be managed keeping the principle of sustainability in mind finally decision implementation this involves the feedback to public so in ethnological approach as you see that human is actually in the center of all activities which are associated with this approach of ethnological approach of natural resource management all right whereas in other previous approaches the role of human is not that much significant or significantly highlighted now if you look at this implication of all these resource management approaches you will find that the fundamental issues associated with natural resource management are the allocation of resources then setting the priorities determination of emphasis making of choices these are you know some important aspect where these resource management approaches often play a role an integration of all those approaches that i have just discussed could help us to understand and also prepare or devise a management strategy which can be beneficial for the economy or economic benefit of the society but at the same time it will also take care of the environment now these strategies should involve various stakeholders policy makers local community involved with those particular resources that are actually available in their area so without the role or participation of those local people or community 
no natural resource management practices will be successful. Next, the experience have shown that the centralized top-down approach conversion is only effective where large amount of project or expenditures on enforcement or under some kind of undemocratic circumstances. This kind of top-down approaches of natural resource management you can see. As an alternative, the participatory approach of various stakeholders including local community is now at present considered to be the essential for effective and sustainable management and conservation of natural resource energy. So, this understanding is now clear among the various you know section of society that participation of every stakeholder is key for an efficient resource management. And it also said that it must be recognized that knowledge of good practice are actually very limited. And here the knowledge of indigenous people or traditional indigenous knowledge should also be considered while making a plan for resource management. A decentralized system of resource management must pay particular attention to monitoring and evaluation. Apart from you know regular financial or physical uh, management of program, different project or performance, monitoring systems, participatory process, transparency, issues of equity, effectiveness of you know various institutional mechanism, linkages, these are some of the important aspects that need to be kept in mind while devising a natural resource management policy for any area. Now, three interrelated issues I would like to discuss here which need to be considered where when you try to understand the relationship between decentralization system and natural resource management. The first one is enabling policy and institutional environment. A helpful policy and a good institutional support is very very important for resource management. Decentralized policies have potential to encourage you know the evolution of community based institutions. It also encourages the participation of community, the local people. So, the benefits of cooperative management in turn will be affected by the nature of property rights of various resources. So, if you look at the legal status of community based institutions like self-help group, pharma producers companies, water user group, whether they have authority to manage financial resources or you know different other issues, these need to be also evaluated. Now, macroeconomic conditions affecting the financial viability of small producers also need to be checked. Extent of rural infrastructure is another critical aspect because it is the infrastructure in the rural area especially could affect the access to various resources. So, even if suppose some resource are available and could be made ready for utilizations, but just because there is no appropriate access to that particular resources, many a time the community would be deprived of utilizing that resources. So, that is also another aspect that need to be looked at. Second point, participatory processes for establishing community based groups. These are actually the new learnings that are being now applied in the field of natural resource management across the world. Community based groups are being formed because they are more effective, they are more efficient in case of managing resources which are available in their own area. They are more decentralized in nature. The management strategies also should be incentive based where there are you have kind of dual benefit the resource and the community both are taken care of because they are dependent on each other. The community should take care of resources, resource is also take care of community's need. Now, the benefit from management of natural resources must accrue quickly, locally, transparently and as 
equitably as possible because the equity issue of resource allocation is another very very important aspect which need to be looked at with a very sensitive mind otherwise the entire exercise of resource management could be a futile one effective operational linkages between institutional actors to facilitate large scale adoption of sustainable nrm practices natural resource management practices so here you will need to review restructure the public sector agencies who become more responsive to their clients decentralizations of responsibility and authority for resource management decisions then design an appropriate decentralized financial instrument like social fund demand driven rural investment fund local development fund and then decentralized financial instrument must be enabled on the basis of community based local procurement of goods and services so essentially what you find here that the natural resource management practices if we want to be successful then the role of community participation of community thinking people into every planning exercise is critical for the success of any natural resource management policy strategy of any place mm -hmm.